Hi everybody, it's Dr. Modi Charter again, back again for another hoot. This time we're gonna talk about one of our cameras and it is a Griffin Vulture nesting camera. Now this camera is famous not because of the camera itself but because of the Vulture pier, this Griffin Vulture pier. So we're gonna talk about this Griffin Vultures and we're gonna talk about the person, the human that's behind them. That's Mr. Eagle Miller that unfortunately, or fortunately for him, unfortunately for us, is retiring this month. So I want to talk a little bit about him. He's been the guy that brought us to these cameras and and uh, and he's an amazing person and we'll get to hear a, bit, a little bit about him. So first of all, Griffin Vultures. So a little terminology. Um, of, there's something called a vulture, which is a, a bird of prey that scavenges. It, it, they eat dead carcasses. Um, they're quite... Uh, rear birds in Europe and in Africa and in Asia in the old world but in the new world you have something called a buzzard and a buzzard is actually not uh, not a true vulture they're more related I believe to the storks and they've evolved to be similar to the, the vultures that you find in the old world but then you have something called a buzzard in Europe which a buzzard in Europe is similar to a hawk in the in the, the uh in America, in uh, North, Central, and South America. So it gets very confusing. <laughs> the, you have buzzards, hawk, vultures. Um, uh, even sometimes they confuse vultures with eagles. But these are griffin vultures. They're large scavenger, scavengers. They're beautiful birds. Uh, they're locally endangered in Israel. So they have this huge project. The Israel Nature Parks Authority has this huge project called Open Wings that they tr try to preserve these vultures and do it through many different means. These vultures suffer from persecution, from uh, electric power lines. They get electrocuted from poisoning. Sometimes farmers, they poison, uh, 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 want to poison wolves and jackals. And, and by doing so in, inadvertently, they poison uh, these vultures. Unfortunately, these vultures have huge home ranges. Israel's a tiny country. They frequently fly outside the borders of Israel and they're captured uh, or hunted uh, by some of our, our neighbors, which is a huge, huge problem in the Middle East and also in, in Africa. So these vultures, uh, and, and obviously because of loss of habitat, Throughout the world, humans are growing. We take the habitat away from these large, beautiful animals, these birds. So there's an active uh, project that are trying to reproduce these vultures and try to increase their population by decreasing, first and foremost, the things that hurt them, like the electricity execution and also the poisoning and other things. But they also have a breeding program that they're trying to reproduce these vultures. Uh, and they do this in uh, throughout Israel with the help of other partners like Ramat and Adiv, different zoos, a safari, different zoos, uh, the J Jerusalem Bible Zoo. All these zoos help reproduce these vultures. Um, and, and the idea is is reproducing them and releasing them back into nature. Uh, and hopefully these vultures will survive. So we have our vulture pier, which is unique because they're actually handicapped. They were born in 2000 with rickets, which, which is, uh, uh, creates bone uh, deformities. Uh, so these vultures could never be released back into nature. They can't fly. Uh, Eagle Miller, the person I'll tell you about, he raised them, hand raised them. Um, but what they did was they released these vu handicapped vultures within a fenced-in area next to a feeding station, which we also have a camera. They're wild. They don't like people. They're in. They have their uh, their unique little area that they stay in within this area. They feed, and they provided them a nest. <laughs> and these vultures, they reproduce every year. They lay eggs. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the times their eggs are not fertile. <laughs> but there's this huge project, and this is where the camera our cameras come in that our live cameras provide the Israel Nature Parks Authority 24-7 uh, surveillance on these vultures and when an egg is laid they want to what they do is actually come and take that egg away they may do one of two things take it away and not replace it with a demi egg in that case the vulture will relay another egg and then they can get two eggs out the egg will go and be uh, incubated in a, a zoo um, so that, so that's one of the things that they could do. Um, uh, or what they can do is sometimes they can just take the, the egg or the first one or the second one and re replace it with a demi egg. 
an, an egg that um, looks like, like an egg, the vultures sit on it, and they do this in order <laughs> to protect the uh, eggs uh, by leaving them in nature. Things can happen, rain, they can be broken, predated. So by taking the eggs away, they protect them. For them, every egg is super important. Now these handicapped vultures, they can't fly, but they're unbelievable parents. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, this is already the third year that we have this camera, fourth year, sorry, that we have this camera up. Uh, our viewers are the ones that always find that the vultures lay the eggs. They let me know. I let the Israel Nature Parks Authority know. They immediately come <laughs> switch out the eggs, uh, which is unbelievable. That surveillance, the help of you, the people, uh, is truly amazing. The, the cooperation that people, for example, Marcin or Rosa from Portugal or from Poland are able to observe and tell me in Israel and they're actually able to make real change. <clears throat> so they switch out these eggs. These vultures are unbelievable parents, even though they cannot fly. They protect their nest, they protect um, their egg. And then when the egg is about to hatch, that what happens is we take, um, we, I don't, the Israel Nature Parks Authority, they take uh, nestlings that hatch in captivity and, <laughs> and they switch it out with the uh, egg. Uh, and then the parents immediately accept this nestling as their own. They adopt their nestling and they take unbelievable great care, protect it, feed it, sh shade it, pr uh, sh provide it shelter, unbelievable, protect it from other animals. Lots of other animals like to come to look at these uh, nestlings. <coughs> um, and luckily, because of this uh, uh, project in the last three years, the, <coughs> this bear has fledged um, fledglings, um, three different nestlings. On Fortunately, the first one, A90, is still alive, and he's cruising around Israel in the Middle East. The um, previous two um, <coughs> fledglings were um, actually captured in the Middle East and Africa <laughs> and, uh, and probably killed. Um, this is a huge problem with these vultures. They like their home ranges are huge. Kind of goes back to the old uh, 101 in nature conservation in the U.S. with peregrine falcons that... Peregrine falcons were protected in the U.S., but they were dying, and they realized they were dying because they were ingesting uh, pesticides in South America. So it's very, very hard to conserve wildlife when you're in one country, and the species that you're trying to protect crosses over into other countries. And we have this problem in Israel. Uh, hopefully, uh, through education and cooperation, uh, these things will be improved. Uh, um, it's very important. So currently, um, the... the uh, a male and a female both incubate are sitting on a an egg they switched it out a few weeks ago originally the pier bred behind the nest they built this kind of makeshift nest it was dangerous because the eggs or nestlings could be predated so they decided to move the demi egg into the original nest eagle millers carefully takes out the original egg and switches it with the fake egg It took the female no time to come and she immediately accepted this fake egg. Quite amazing. Very, very nice. Always great to see. And obviously the father that we all came to love, he came, saw this egg, and adopted it as his own. They're incubating. Hopefully the um, um, they'll get a nestling and this will be the fourth nestling fourth year in a row they'll be adopted parents and i'm sure they'll do an amazing job just like the previous three years and they will raise this young the nestling <clears throat> grows up and what happens is he leaves the nest and immediately goes and interacts with other vultures in the feeding station and then he fledges he fledges normally he learns from the other vultures watching and observing them uh so the and then his parents continue on they're they're amazing amazing birds So stay tuned, uh, watch these vultures, uh, hopefully uh, they'll get the nestling soon. Uh, they're amazing, amazing birds. As I said, our moderators like them the best. And now last but not least, the person behind this, the father, or maybe the grandfather, is Eagle Miller. This guy is unbelievable. He's not only a handsome man, plays the part well. He's been working with these birds since 1992. He created the project, the man behind the scenes. And he also has done many other captive breeding programs, including Golden Eagles, uh, Saker Falcons, uh, Go um, Bonelli's Eagle. 
This guy is just truly amazing. He loves and lives these uh, vultures. I, I'm in great and con constant contact with him. He's, he, he always is running around the country to pick up carcasses to feed them. And, and he truly loves them. He works 24 seven, seven days a week. He's dedicated his life to these vultures. Uh, he's not alone. He's, uh, works. He has a, uh, with, with other people, Israel Nature Parks Authority. There's a lot of Tsofe and other people. But e Eagle is without a doubt one of the backbones of this project. Um, it'll be tough to see Eagle go. He's retiring. Hopefully he'll still be around. His, uh, his, uh, his partner is actually a PhD student with, of mine. So I'll still be in touch with Eagle, obviously. And he's also a great friend. Uh, so this Eagle Miller, you know, he's going to be missed. Uh, he already has his replacement. He has a uh, huge shoes of Phil. Ella Ziso, good luck. Um, so Eagle Miller, you're the best. I must speak English? Oh no. Oh, very, very good. Very, welcome. very good. Welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to just to say hello and thank you to all the uh, watchers. How you call watchers, them? The helpers, watchers, volunteers, the helpers, volunteers, moderators, moderators. Yeah, it's, it's, ama it's amazing what you do. It's uh, even each time I'm surprised. It's so, in the night, in the morning, and and it gives to us a lot of help. Like Come, we got a surprise uh, you are, on Wednesday. You are like my eyes and here, and I, I can make it the job, and I'm, I'm much more free to do another job. Okay, right, and again, <laughs> thank you very, very much. So I hope you like this video. Um, sorry if it was a little bit coughing in the middle. I've been kind of ill the last month, so trying to keep on moving and not stopping. But as you can see, sometimes. The body is uh, um, tells me to slow down. As you can see, all the coughing and choking in the middle. So I hope you like this video. Thank you, everybody, for the donations, the participation in the chat, and all the help that you do, in particular with these vultures, the ones, people that are dedicated, watch these vultures and help protect them, and all the other bird species. So please do not forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Keep on watching. Hoochie later.